<sighs> Another little bit of Rabinia. Tiny bit of burr. Might be able to make something from it. Yes, hello and welcome again. Um, little bit of Rabinia left from the blank that John Dempsey gave me that I've trimmed a little bizarrely and uh, well there's a bit of burr there I might be able to do something I might not we'll find out though so we're back to the same mounting method as last time which is a step center held in the Nova jaws on my chuck and just mounting it between centers so I can uh, get it balanced as well as possible. A uh, little bit of adjustment needed. And then just turning that back face so that I can get uh, a bit of a curve on it. Now coming in from the outside would be the better way of cutting this so that I'm not gonna chip the bark off. But I did some cuts from the middle to the outside first to get a sort of rough shape going. And then it was a case of cutting from the inside, but very carefully moving back to the outside with the bevel rubbing so that I'm not just poking in from the from the air and hoping to catch the wood so a little bit of a caution needed now getting a tenon sorted out for the for the same chuck that's got the step center in and it cut very nicely and very cleanly it really needed very little sanding the flat edges obviously um, need a decision made about them uh, I did decide in the end to sand them smooth I was thinking of leaving them rough sawn but you'll see them being sanded off later on. <clears throat> and now we come to turning the face. And what I wanted to do here was keep as much of the feature wood as possible. Um, but I did want it to be flat and smooth so I could get a, a, a good sanded finish on it and a nice shine. And this is what I mean about cutting from the, from the outside. Coming from the solid wood with the bevel rubbing, moving the tool back, feeling the wood connecting so that I know I'm only taking, you know, maybe a 16th or a 32nd or a, a millimeter or two um, at a time. See me just turning the handle a little. I'm keeping the flute pretty closed because I don't want to have um, too big a cut. Just nice and smooth and gentle. And let's see what the surface looks like there. You can see quite a lot of the burl has been left, which is, <clears throat> you know, the most interesting feature of the wood. So I was pleased about that. And it held secure. I thought it might come off, but it didn't. So now just turning uh, a little bowl in the middle so it has some use other than a rather thick coaster. I can see it's something that you could keep a few little knickknacks in. Or just a nice little decorative object, if you like, having bits of wood around your house as quite a lot of us do, I guess. Uh, so just getting rid of the middle there and cleaning up. You can see I've got a few little grooves there that I need to take, take care of. Um, turned a bit sharply and it's bruised. The bevel has bruised the wood a little. So a few lighter cuts and some sanding uh, and that will remove those marks. It was a very quick project to do. Here we go, the fun sanding. Again, I've edited quite a lot of the sanding out, but some of it was done with the lathe on, some with it stationary. Obviously, I'm not gonna sand those outside edges with the, with the wood spinning. And here I am on my um, little disc sander made from the motor of an old lathe. <clears throat> so I was just sanding those two edges flat this is 150 grit on the on the um, on the disc, so it did need a bit of hand sanding um, afterwards. And the corner there, I'm just rounding that round because there was a little branch going through there with a little bit of pith on it. And then just truing up the face, there were a couple of marks. I hadn't got quite um, down to smooth wood, and you'll see in the final shots actually there was still a little bit of a, uh, a saw mark on one of those straight edges jam chuck time so a little block i think it might be some sycamore i'm not sure um, going in uh, to the chuck and that's me saying i'm coming for lunch <clears throat> right back from lunch and 
turning that foot off, I forgot to film this on the Rabinia vase. So here you see uh, the tooling in action, leaving that little nub in the middle that's held on with the live point. And then I've got a ridiculously sharpened little uh, spindle gouge just going in there. In fact, I actually went a bit too deep and had a rather lot of sanding to do to remove um, the little tool mark that they left behind. And on to the bit I love the most, putting the oil on and watching that grain really warm up and seeing what it's going to look like. It's really making me uh, inspired to go out and make sure I deal with the Rabinia trunk of burl I've got on my drive, courtesy of my cousin. Stephen. So thank you very much for that, Stephen. Right, just pushing some of, of the stain, not the stain, sorry, the oil <clears throat> into the bark area. Right, let's give that a moment to uh, soak and then I'll buff off any excess. Well, there we go. Two non-colouring videos in a row. I feel like I'm cheating you. But I don't just do coloured wood turning, as a, a look at my website will show. Right, it's had one coat of the oil, just drying, soaking in, so it's going to build up a bit more of a sheen. But I really think it's very, very pretty wood. Really lovely and, and really quite solid. And I've kept most of that bit of burr in there. A very nice little occasional bowl to keep on your coffee table. If people have coffee tables anymore little bit rough there where the knot is but it's a bit of a bit rough and ready but it was too pretty just to do nothing with I hope you agree anyway perhaps next time there'll be some coloring who knows thanks for watching brushing your teeth. <laughs>